First of all, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I was 21. I was supposed to go see Tommy James and Sean Dawes at the Silverton Hotel in Vegas. Long story short, their guitar player got stuck in Dallas. They would have been forfeit of contract. So I filled in for the guitar spot, the lead guitar spot, the day of. And he says I really helped him out of a bind, out of a jam. And um, ever since then, he's an honorary Sean Dow. And what was that like? Um, it, for me, it was amazing, personally. Um, I had a moment where I got sidetracked. I was beside myself because as a kid I listened to oldies a lot on my alarm clock radio and all of a sudden I was going to be playing the lead guitar for Crystal Blue Persuasion and I almost missed it. <laughs> I almost missed the intro but you know it's just one of those moments you just couldn't believe you're there. Right right place, right time. I'm very fortunate. That is wonderful. Well, okay, let's see. That must have happened more than once because you opened up for B.B. King. I did, yes. Well, um... Yes, yeah, so, yeah, tell me all about that. I was fortunate enough, just lucky enough to be right place, right time. Um, I used to work at the Empire Polo Fields, uh, okay. so they knew me. And so they asked, Alex, how'd you like to open for B.B. King? And, you know, I was a blues guy. And, you know, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. And not just an opportunity of a lifetime, but B.B. was incredibly influential to me in my guitar playing. Uh, one of the quotes B.B. said, he says, you know, all these gift fiddlers, they love to show you all the notes they can play. He says, but it only matters how you play the one. <laughs> yeah, he, he milked up, kept you waiting on the edge of your seat. I liked that. Yeah. So I had the great pleasure of um, introducing myself to BB and shaking his hand, and he held my guitar. I bought a Lucille guitar right before the concert just so I could yeah. show homage. Perfect. Yeah. That's fantastic. And now you're working on your own album. I am working currently on my first album. Ever. Um, all the composition, uh, compositions on this album will be originals, will be mine, but I'll have different vocalists, different artists, different instrumentalists come in on the album. Huh. It'll be an eclectic album. It'll be anything from reggae to smooth jazz oh. to a little Latin and tango and a little bit of blues. So it's going to be very eclectic. That's wonderful. I would like to buy one of those. Thank you. I'll let yes. you know when they're ready. It should be done by the end of this summer. Nice. I said, and so, are you from here? Because you've been here since I've been here. Um, I was born in Southern California, uh, in uh, Redlands Community Hospital, uh, so not too far. And uh, I was raised out here. I moved away, but I moved back. So I like to think of myself as a local. If I'm, if I'm from anywhere, I'm, I'm from here. Now, your place where you stay is, has history. Uh, so, yes, you've been over to my uh, location there. We've played music there, up there, and um, it's called the, the Hilltop Music Spot. Uh, I live in Sky Valley, and it's an old gangster hideout that is on the top of a hill, 300-foot hilltop. Um, so it's a, an incredible view. Which gangsters live there? This gangster was uh, Harry Bennett. He worked for Henry Ford okay. back in uh, whenever. 
but now it's just a music spot. And it's a really, um, it, all the artists that come up to create music or art up there, they, they say there's an energy about the place. And I'm fortunate because everybody loves coming up. So. Well, the view is fantastic. And you have an indoor swimming pool and sauna, and, and, and you have that. Uh, you have, I, I saw a few places that would be fantastic to shoot there. It, the entire property and the premises feels like it's meant to create art. It just has that feel about it. And you're right, there's photography spots, there's video spots. There's, you, you think about shooting movies up there or making an album. Well, you do a certain amount of photography yourself. I do a little photography, yes. I am um, fortunate enough to attend the Joshua Tree Music Festival okay. twice a year, and I shoot uh, photography for an uh, acrobatic group by the name of Flowbox. Wow. Well, that's fun. You're having a fun life. Now, where did you learn, how did you start playing the guitar? Did someone teach you, or did you pick it up on your own? Um, you know, I had a toy guitar hanging in the house, and, you know, it was somewhat playable given the right care <laughs> and maintenance. Uh, but we also had a piano in the house, an upright right. piano. So I, I started with piano lessons. Okay. Um, and that's when the bug bit. And I played saxophone in school. I wanted to play saxophone. And eventually I picked up the guitar. And the only difference with guitar as opposed to piano and saxophone was that I excelled on the guitar with a greater ease and, and greater uh, fluidity, I suppose. So it's came a little bit more naturally. And, and you, you touch every style. You, you, you're, you're not limited at all. You must spend a lot of time practicing and studying. Well, I will say that uh, I haven't put down the guitar since I picked it up. Um, and that's been 19 years now. So that's your best girl. That's right. That's right. <laughs> she doesn't yell at me. She yells for me. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's a good line. I think uh, Aaron Johnson said that. Um, I've had to play many very uh, different varieties of music growing up. I started with uh, local guys out here by the name of the Barkeep Pop Fish, and we were playing folk and bluegrass. So I was reading those charts. And in school, I was in symphonic band and jazz band. And then I, later, I got into reggae bands. And then I fell in love with the blues. And then I traveled to Cuba and fell in love with Afro Cuban music. So. I just found as a musician, if you want to keep working, you probably should play a little bit of everything. Good idea. What's your background? Your, your, what's your ethnic background? My ethnic background, I am Mexican-American. I'm first generation uh, Mexican-American. My father's from Sonora. My mother's side of uh, family are from Durango. Um, grew up in East L.A. They did. Uh, I was kind of raised out there for a little bit before I came out here. Uh, so my background is very Mexican, uh, mariachi, boleros, romantic music, uh, which you know my, my family loves all that type of music, but I fell in love with the blues. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so did I. But I like all that music, too, very much so. It, 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 touched, it touched me. I don't know how to say it. Um, I connected more with the blues than anything. I felt like I could... Uh, express myself more easily with the blues and uh, the blues guitar. I fell in love with B.B. King and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, so that's that's what I kind of excelled at. That's, I think, what kept me going is the blues. Where are you playing next? Well, this evening, uh, I have a little gig, a little solo gig. I perform solo primarily these days. Right. I'm at uh, Shield States this evening. I'm at Wang's every Tuesday in downtown Palm Springs. Right. And since the summer's coming along, it's going to slow down a little bit, yeah. but it gives me more time to work on the album. That's perfect timing. Well, hopefully. Could you maybe play something from your album? Oh, I wish I could, but no, no. Um, and the reason why I tell you is it's a collaboration effort. It's okay. uh, multi-instrument, multi-vocalist. And uh, I'd love to play something for you off the album. Do you have a name for your album? No, no, still kind of uh, in the works. Well, maybe you could play me something on that that guitar you've got there. That I would love to do for you. All right. All right. Do I need a microphone or anything? Well, yeah, we'll set you all up. What are you thinking about playing? Um, you know, I was going to play, 
I was expecting to play on the electric guitar, but they got me on the nylon here. Okay. So uh, I was thinking about doing a jazz standard. Um, this is a rendition that's uh, one of my favorite renditions by Brian Nova, a local uh, artist out here as well. And it's uh, Samba the Orpheo, or Black Orpheo song, A Day in the Life of a Fool, from Carnival. So I really do appreciate the recognition. Uh, you know, sometimes as musicians, we, we keep playing, but we uh, sometimes wonder if anyone's really paying attention. And this kind of goes to show, so thank you. I, I appreciate it. Well, uh, CB Weekly is paying attention, that's for sure. I, 